Welcome to Terrifying Tales, the channel dedicated to bringing you the original horror stories from author CJ Knight. If you like what you hear, please like and share the video. Feel free to leave a comment and please consider subscribing to the channel. When the man came around. It's rough living on the land south of Globe, Arizona. I'll always remember one day more than any other. My name is Thomas Miller and this is my story. It was 1887 and I was 13 years old. Geronimo had surrendered the previous year. Despite the surrender, Apache warriors remained an ever-present thorn in the cavalry side. Hostilities between the rivals continued as the warriors crossed the Mexican border into Arizona. Skirmishes and raids were frequent. I, along with my father Thomas Sr. and my sister Susan, lived on a small horse farm close to the Mexican border. My mother had perished some years back birthing my sister. Despite all the hostilities, the Apache left us alone. In return, they stopped at the farm whenever the need arose. It was a tough decision my father made to keep me and my sister safe. This day started like many others. With the sun still resting on the horizon, I never saw their approach. It was the steady trot of hooves that drew my attention. Ten horses, in neat two by two formation, made their way toward the farm. As they drew close, the blue coats came into view. Thomas, take Susan inside, my father said. Don't come out until I say so. Who is that? Susan said. Never mind that. Susan wasn't used to father being short with her. She offered no protest. I took hold of her arm and led her inside. What's father worried about, Thomas? Susan whispered. Who are those men? I never took my eyes from the window. The cavalry, I said. The men circled father on their horses. The one directly in front of him dismounted. His voice carried through the air. I am Captain Henry Brady of the 6th Cavalry. I'm searching for Thomas Miller. What do they want with father, Thomas? Susan whispered. My heart sank in my chest. They know, Susan. What do they know? They know the Apache come here to the farm. Susan lifted her hand to her mouth. Now she understood. Captain Brady spoke again. Reliable information has been supplied, Thomas Miller, that you have been assisting the Apache. This traitorous activity is more than troubling. An example needs to be made. Captain Brady's eyes found mine. There are more guilty parties inside. Bring them to me. Men kicked the door in. One soldier grabbed Susan by the hair. She screamed as he dragged her along the rocks and dirt and dropped her next to father. I stayed on my feet as I too was dragged. The thin trail of blood passed by. Susan's blood. The rocks had left their mark on my sister's legs. Susan sobbed as they lifted her to her knees beside father. A soldier kicked the back of my legs to drop me to my knees beside them. I will not tolerate traitors, Captain Brady said. He drew his pistol and took aim at Susan. My father lunged toward the captain. The crack of the gunshot echoed for miles and my father fell lifeless to the ground in front of me. Between her sobbing, Susan prayed. Her prayers ended with the second shot. Her body made a gentle thud as it fell beside me. I locked eyes with Captain Brady. He was smiling beneath his moustache. No hint of remorse in his blue eyes. My sister's prayers had gone unheard. In that moment, I felt a fury that I never had. I wanted Captain Brady and his men dead. I wanted them to suffer. I wanted the devil himself to take them all. Ryder! One soldier called. I looked past Captain Brady. Riding toward the farm was a rider dressed in black. The horse beneath him was white as snow. A cold washed over me. The rider's face remained hidden in shadow under his hat. His horse made no sound as each hoof kissed the ground. Find out who that is, Captain Brady said. Two soldiers mounted and covered the ground toward the lone rider. Captain Brady lowered his pistol. For the moment, he'd lost his interest in me. 
My eyes found Susan. Her pale yellow dress stained red, her eyes staring blankly at the sky. My fury returned. In the same moment, fresh cracks of gunfire cried out. The two soldiers with the rider slumped in their saddles. Their horses spooked and rode off in the distance with their bodies. The other soldiers panicked and opened fire. The rider in black dismounted. With a revolver in each hand, he returned fire. Screams of agony echoed and the smell of blood filled the air. The ground was painted red. One by one, the soldiers dropped until only Captain Brady remained. The captain raised his pistol. The rider stood metres in front of him. Captain Brady emptied his pistol. Each bullet found the rider's chest. I waited for the rider to fall. The moment never came. The rider lifted one of his own pistols and fired. The bullet tore through Captain Brady's hand and there was a soft thud as his pistol fell to the ground. The next bullet found the captain's leg, dropping him to his knees. He reached for his pistol with his healthy hand. Another bullet ripped through that one too. The rider continued walking forward. Like his horse, his steps made no sound. As he stood over the captain, I was happy. The man who killed my father and sister no longer smiled. A puddle of urine joined the puddle of blood beneath his knees. Please, Captain Brady pleaded. The rider reholstered his pistols. One thought ran through my head. Do it. As soon as the thought entered my mind, the rider's hand shot forward and gripped the captain's throat. The captain let out a muffled groan, which turned into a scream as the rider lifted him from the ground. Captain Brady's skin bubbled and burst. His coat caught fire. His entire body burst into flames. With such a heat, it forced my eyes closed. When I opened them, nothing remained of Captain Brady, save a small pile of ash in front of the rider's boots. The rider turned and walked back towards his pale horse. My eyes, blurred by tears, drifted from Susan to my father. I want them back, I thought. The rider paused mid-step. He turned and walked back toward me. As he stood there towering over me, he spoke words for the first time. Are you sure, Thomas? Such a wish carries a hefty price. Words caught in my throat. I was sure. I just couldn't form the words. Very well, the writer said. I realised he could hear my thoughts. He knelt down and placed one hand on Susan and the other on Father. I held my breath as their chests began to rise and fall. The rider stood. Don't wake when I'm gone, he said. Thank God, I thought. God? The rider said. You didn't pray to God, Thomas. Blood drained from my face. I'll be back for you when today's debt is due. The rider mounted his horse and together they vanished. The remains of the soldiers vanished along with them. Father and Susan came too, as the rider had promised. Neither of them remember anything from that day. Seven years on, not a day has passed where I haven't thought about the rider. And it's now, as I see the rider on the pale horse, coming back toward the farm once again, that I remind you all, make your prayers. Just be careful who you make them to.